Continue today this series we started last week, Voices in My Head. Not just my head, but your head as well. Uh, these voices, remember we talked about them last week? There's, these are these voices that, I, I said it last week, and, and, and it's true. The biggest lie I've ever been told is sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Lie. All right? And, and so what happens is sometimes the, the problem with the voices, as we talked about last week, is the voices aren't unknown. They're known. They're usually from people we love and we care about or people who love and care about us. And sometimes they do it intentionally to harm us. But, but most times, most of the time, it's that unintentional. But those voices just keep playing in our head over and over and over again. And what happens is those voices stop being their voice and they become our voice. And we, we remind ourselves we're not good enough, we're not smart enough, we're not gifted enough, we're ugly, we're stupid, we don't matter, we have, why do we always, it just plays over and over. And it makes, the problem with that is it makes it hard to hear the voice of God saying, I love you, you're fearfully and wonderfully made, you're beautiful. We can't hear that voice because all these other voices are going crazy in here. And we're learning, you can't shut them up. They just keep talking. They're doing this. And you're like, but they keep going. What you have to do and what we're going to start working on is training ourselves to listen to the one true voice. That one voice that speaks truth into our lives. That's, that's constant. It's interesting. They're all talking. They're all speaking. It's about which one are you going to listen to. So we're going to talk about that today, and I want you all to be thankful for the Thursday night service. We talked after the Thursday night service, like, ooh, I need to make a few changes. So, one of the changes. Do your kids ever do this? My kids, I loved this when my kids were growing up. When they were smaller, my kids would come out in a costume. We had tons of costume in our houses. And they would come out and go, you don't know who I am. (laughs) And I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know who you are. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he'd do this. I'm Jacob. Right? And they'd wear that mask. They'd put that mask on. And they, they thought they were so funny. And they're like, they don't know. And then they had, we had the big Hulk arms and the big Hulk hands. And they'd walk around, smash, 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 smash. I'm Hulk. Shh, no, I'm Jacob. I'm Jacob. Right? I love that. Except for it's true about us. We wear masks, don't we? And to hide who we are. And so the first thing to do to stop listening to the voices is, Take off your mask. Stop pretending. See, the story is told, and we talked about it last week. I, I mean, we're not going to read scripture for you today. There are several scripture passages I'm going to talk about, but I'd like for you to do something challenging. Go home and read it for yourselves. Actually, open the Bible. If you open it on your phone, it is just as spiritual as opening the book. But I, I'm going to talk to you about from Genesis 2 and 3, and then another scripture passage from Genesis later on. But just read it on your own later on to think about it. But in Genesis chapter 2, something really incredible happens. And the scriptures tell us that God created, God took dirt. And that God took this dirt and that God formed a, a body. And that God breathed into that body. And life began. And it said it was Adam or Adama that came. And literally the word means literally came out of the dirt, out of the ground. And so there's Adam. And then it says that God looked for a suitable helper for Adam, and Adam, that God couldn't find a suitable helper, brought all the animals by. What about the dog? What about the chicken? What about the pig? What, nope, 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 nope. God says, there's nobody here that can, there's nobody. And so it says God put Adam to sleep and took a rib. So God said, you know, if you, but it's fun to watch. Some of y'all start trying to figure out which one. I, I did this one time with some teenagers, and the girls are going, I'm like, guys, one rib you're missing, right? God takes a rib out of a man and makes what? You know why, you know why we call her woman, don't you? Because when Adam saw her, he went, whoa, man. <laughs> yeah, if you don't like that, you're going to hate the rest of the sermon too, all right? <laughs> okay? But it's like, but so God created Adam and Eve, and so there's Adam and Eve, and then there's this Genesis chapter 2, 25, if you go look it up, has this really interesting phrase. It says that Adam and Eve were both naked, and they weren't ashamed. They were both naked and and weren't embarrassed. And I spent some time at Duke this week learning how to preach again. It's one of the things they were helping me work on. One of the things they were working on is I don't say the word naked right. I'm like, yes, I do. I say it proper. Y'all are wrong. <laughs> um, and it's because uh, they, they say the way I say naked makes you think you ain't no clothes on and you're up to something. And that the correct word pronunciation is shush. I got to get it in my head. <laughs> N- naked? N- is it naked? Naked, is that right? 
Yeah, it's naked. All right. <laughs> that, and, and so we always take that to mean that they had no clothes on and they were naked. But actually, the Hebrew word, as we talked about last week, you should remember this, is the word for naked also means vulnerable. That Adam and Eve were naked in front of each other. That, that Adam knew everything there was to know about Eve, and he's good with it. And Eve knows everything there is to know about Adam, and she's good with it. You that way today with somebody? There's somebody that knows everything about you. Like, yeah, we're good, right? No, no, no. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Hello. You know why? Everything fell apart. We talked about in the story that Adam and Eve, this wonderful, beautiful, good creation. And then we know the story. We talked about it last week. You can read in Genesis 3 that Adam and Eve, there's that discussion with the snake. Always a bad thing to talk to a walking and talking snake. They talk to the snake. They eat the fruit. And the scripture says their eyes were open and they realized that they were what? Naked. All right, they were naked. They realized. All right. In that moment, what if Adam all of a sudden realized, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. She could, she could hurt me. She could do something to cause me pain. Oh, shoot, I, I could do something that could cause her pain. And the very next line in Scripture says this strange thing. They sewed together fig leaves to make garments. You ever seen pictures of Adam and Eve? They have fig leaves placed in very interesting places. What if they weren't making fig leaves? What if they were doing things to cover themselves up, to protect themselves, to say, hey, uh, n- no. No, there's not a bad thing about doing that. Sometimes you need to. Sometimes you need to create you just can't be out there naked in front of everybody. So you, you cover yourselves up. And there's sometimes in some places you need to do that. But, but other times, I mean, if, if the problem is if I'm covering myself up so I can't get hurt, I also don't get to know you really well. And we create this barrier. And so then we have to start talking about uh, the how... how the word is actually it's, it's, it's intimacy. How do we become intimate with people? And intimate, it means that closeness, that familiarity. How do, I, how do I get to know you and you get to know me and really get to know me because I don't want us, right? You know, you know where we do this the best, don't you? Church. How you doing? Fine. How are you? Oh, I'm good. The divorce is going well. How are you doing? Fine, except for the addiction issue. Are you right? I'm fine. Uh, this church, this other church had a great video, and so we stole it in a loving Christian way, of course, uh, off YouTube. Uh, to talk about the mask you wear in church. Take a look. Here's the funny thing about people. We all like to look good, to make a good impression, to show everyone else we have it all together. Even though none of us do, the only way to pull this off is to put something else on. And that something is called a mask. A mask can help you get a job. I have over 12 years of consumer electronics experience playing video games in my parents' basement. It can make you look smarter. Organizational energies to maximize corporation synergy. I have no idea what I'm saying. And more dateable. I can't believe you're single. And I can't believe it's, you're 25. I'm not single. I'm not 25. We use our mask to impress people. 65 inch LED TV. Oh, it was gorgeous. It was like only this thick. I mean, you know, it's expensive and all, but it is the best. <sighs> so much debt. We use them to fool people. I thought I was going the speed limit, officer. We even use them to protect the feelings of the people we love. That was a beautiful song, sweetie. I'm pretty sure you're tone deaf. I think I'm just going to walk to school today. Because I'm kind of embarrassed to be seen with you. He sounds like a great guy. What are you thinking? You do not look fat in those jeans. So that's why they call it a muffin top. We all wear masks from time to time, but the craziest place we put them on is in church. Hello, brother. Hey, 
Man. Greetings to you on this day that the Lord has made. Something about it makes us want to look our best. I'm fine. Sound our best. He hath blessedeth me so verily. It make like everything is perfect. Things are great. But behind every perfect mask is a perfectly messed up life. People with hearts that are empty, confused, addicted, hopeless, helpless, and hurting. People who think... But here's the thing. This is exactly the kind of life where God shows up. Messes are his specialty. The one thing God can't work with is a mask. So around here, we have a saying. It's okay to not be okay. Nobody's perfect. But grace is available. We believe God doesn't love us if or because. He loves us anyway. We all like to look good to others. We like to make a good impression. But when it comes to God, the best impression you can make is to just be you. Best line in that video is, God can't work with a mask. You hear that? Best line. God can't work with your mask. God can't bless who you're pretending to be. First thing you do is you, you got to take off the mask. And that scares us. There's a story in the Bible. It's my favorite, one of my favorite stories in the Bible. I, I say that about every story, but it is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. It's the story of Jacob. Jacob's found in, in Genesis chapter 28 through 50. So that, that's some good reading for you. Um, he's actually 28 through 35. Six, uh, 37 starts the story of Joseph. Jacob's still there, but anyhow, <clears throat> Jacob, uh, main part of his story, if you know the story of Jacob, Jacob was a twin. He had a twin brother named Esau, but Jacob was the second brother. Esau was born first. That means Esau was the beloved. Esau got everything. Esau was, ah, and Jacob was Jacob, right? And then, to make matters worse, Jacob's mom loved Jacob more than she loved Esau. But Esau's dad, Isaac, loved Esau more than he loved Jacob. So Jacob's got all kind of messed up voices in his head. And the story tells us that Jacob's a little bit of a trickster. And one of the things he does is he manipulates, he steals, or he works a really, really bad deal for Esau to get the birthright for a bowl of soup. And then Jacob literally puts on a costume because he wants to get his daddy's blessings. And so it tells us that Esau was a hairy man, and so that Jacob killed a goat and put the goat skins on. And that Isaac felt the goat skins. So part of me is, how hairy was Esau? <laughs> or how blind was Jacob? I mean, I, Isaac. But he rubs it, and Jacob gets the blessing. He pretends to be someone else, and he gets blessed. But Esau is less than thrilled with this. So Jacob spends the next 20 years on the run. He got the blessing by pretending to be something else or someone else. But he couldn't live in it. God can't bless who you're pretending to be. And then so Jacob then, after 20 years or so, is on his way back to meet his brother Esau. And on his way back to meet his brother Esau, he begins to do a strange thing in the story. But now it makes beautiful sense to me. So I'll tell it to you. It's, Jacob realizes his brother Esau is coming to meet him. And so Jacob begins to put some barriers between him and Esau. What he does is he says, look, 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 some of these servants that he doesn't like and some chickens or some other animals. He sends them on and goes, go to Esau and tell him, hey, hey, they're from your servant Jacob. And then he spreads out another group and sends another group saying, hey, send these cows and y'all go too and spread them out. And then he sends another group, right? And there's these groups going to Esau, these barriers going to Esau. And then it says he comes to the river Jabbok. And at the river Jabbok, he, he, he camps for the night. But he realizes, no, 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 what I need to do is I need to take the family, the, those that are closest to me, and I'll put them on this side of the river. And then I'll cross over the river. Now, you know why he's doing that, don't you? It's kind of low down and dirty. Because when Esau starts running into all these people and he starts having, they're like picket fences or picket lines, sentries. He kills that group, oop, pay attention, kills that group, oop, pay attention, kills that group, time to run. He has all these barriers. That's not necessarily a bad thing. 
Because you can't just get naked in front of everybody. And that's a really uncomfortable, awkward thing to do. There, there's, I was thinking about this. It's not really what the story's about, but it, but it made an impression on me. Here, here's some people I sort of get naked in front of. That's y'all. That's Christmas Eve from about two years ago. I, I, I know some of y'all, I know, and, and I preach, I say things when I'm preaching, and some of you are like, I wish you wouldn't say some of that stuff, right? But, but I, I, get, I, I show you a little bit, I, I, let you, I let you in a little bit, right? This is my covenant group, yeah, this is us when we were in the Everglades, we did a swamp walk, brilliant, two miles into the Everglades, you know what the poles are for? They said to push out in front of you, I'm like, why? They said, well, to see if there's a hole that you might fall into or anything that moves, good. Uh, those are those are uh, those are. We are all eight pastors in the Florida Annual Conference. We 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 text nonstop with each other. We pray for each other. We we do a lot of stuff with each other. They they've seen a lot of me. They know a lot about me. There's a little bit of a mask with them, right? But but even in that group, uh, uh, David Miller, the dude in the red hat in the back, I probably talked to him two three times a week. He and I are really close. And Craig, the dude in the orange shirt, his wife uh, Dion and Chris are really good friends. So we do a lot of stuff together. So even in that group, I you know with with that group I'm here, but with them I'm here. Here's another group. That's, well, this group's actually probably seen me naked. Um, family. That's still my favorite family pods because that's pretty much my family chaos. And I love the dog trying to run to get in to the mix, right? Uh, but they know me. They live with me. They, they see everything. I hear somebody. This is, this is, we've been dating one month at this picture. All right? One month. I didn't get very naked in front of her. <laughs> because we were trying to figure each other out. Right? This is last year. <laughs> There's some trust that has to be worked on to get naked in front of somebody, to be vulnerable, to open yourself. So be aware of that. And, and so I thought it was interesting Jacob does that, but the point of the Jacob story is this. Jacob crosses back over the river Jabbok. And he meets a man, and he gets into a wrestling match. And he gets into this wrestling match, and the scripture says he's wrestling this man in the river, and he can't beat the man. But the man can't beat him either. And this is a wrestling match. He goes all night long. And all night they fight back and forth and back and forth. And finally dawn begins to break, and Jacob realizes he can't beat the man. And then all of a sudden the man just pops his hip out of joint. So the dude couldn't beat him all night long, but one pop of the thing and his leg goes crazy? Something jacked up about that story. Don't you think the guy could have beat him at any time and ripped it off? Something about that guy just wanted to wrestle? And all of a sudden, Jacob realizes, I'm not wrestling a man. I'm wrestling God. And he says, bless me. And God goes, who are you? Oh, you remember where you heard that before? You remember in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve hid? And God says, hey, where are you? <laughs> like he didn't know. Or were they just wearing a mask? Because God can't bless who you're pretending to be. God cannot make you whole if you don't show your brokenness. And there's this great moment in the scripture where Jacob goes, no, no, it's me, Jacob. And God blesses him. Voices in your head saying over and over and over again to make you want to do this. God loves you, period. That's who you are. I knew it all along. So today, as you come forward for communion, what's the mask you're wearing? Not with everybody else, but with God. What's that thing that you put on so you tell God, no, I'm good, we're good. 
We're good. I wasn't going to say this line, but it's true. In all kind of ways. Taking off your mask scares the hell out of you. In all kind of ways. The night was Jesus gave himself up for us he took bread he gave thanks unto God and he broke the bread he gave it to his disciples he said take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me when the supper was over he took a cup he gave thanks unto God and after giving thanks he gave it to his disciples and he had said drink from this all of you this is my blood this is the blood of the new covenant is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you should drink of it in remembrance of me and so today we come in remembrance why did Adam and Eve cover themselves they were afraid who were they afraid of God because they were afraid God was going to do what because the scripture says if you eat of that tree you're going to die they were afraid God was going to hurt them the scripture doesn't say God was going to kill them it just says if you eat it you're going to die we put that mask on because we're afraid. And God can't work with the mask. So whatever it is you're wearing, leave it here. Let's pray. God, we just ask that you pour out your spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of the bread and the cup. And make them be for us the body and blood of Christ. As we feast on them, we might experience your love and your grace. And these masks that we wear is comfortable. It makes us feel safe for no one to know. The truth is, you know. We can't hide it from you. But wearing that mask with you cuts us off from your blessing. So we need courage today to be real with you. To say, God, here's my fear, here's my worry, here's my mask. May we lay it down so we hear your voice speak truth to us. That you love us. Just as we are. And we'll go from there. We pray this prayer in the name of your son who taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power. Amen.